The only thing you need to know is the job's real and the money's real. Give this job to my friend here. He loves playing in the jungle. Right? Right. What's his problem? I'm back. Take a name. Take a name. Take a name. A. B. N. It's headphones nailed! Headphones Neil here, back with another um, film review, and in this case is going to be the trilogy of films around The Expendables. So I did rewatch all three films, or I'm saying rewatch because I did um, watch definitely the first. Well, actually, I did see all three of them. The first two um, streaming when they came out, or when they were available for rental. The third one. A little while after it came out, I didn't see any of them in the theaters because probably, like, much like a lot of people, it was one of those things where it's a big budget action film based around a lot of the action hero action heroes from the 80s and 90s, but now that they're much older, um, how their friendship and things like that are panning out now. So all the big characters that you see, so Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Statham, uh, Mel Gibson, Wesley Snipes and all those various characters are in the film over the, or in the films over the course of the three films, and in general, I found them more enjoyable than I thought I would. Um, so it's they're not films that you would expect to be or expect to have any sort of depth or anything like that to them. But overall, I did like them because they do include just about every callback that you would expect from the films. So um, Schwarzenegger saying I'll be back, um, Stallone having his uh, Rambo pose, doing some boxing, Mel Gibson calling on his character from the Lethal Weapon films, um, and all of that. So overall, like I said, I generally just found the films to be a good time. So. As far as some of the stuff that I liked specifically, um, I liked Arnold, or at least in the first film, I liked the conversation between um, him and Stallone when they're meeting with, um, uh, what's his name, um, Bruce Willis, and Arnold says, I heard he likes to play in the jungle in reference to Stallone. Um, I like Terry Crews saying, I better get this back or your ass is terminated. Um, I like the friendship between Dolph Lundgren and Jet Li in the first two films, which was noticeably missing in the third film, and presented probably the most confusing part because um, at the end of the third film, you have Jet Li and Arnold Schwarzenegger in on a joke that no one else seems to be in, or what I what I took, which was probably my same reaction the first time around, but then the second time around. Well, yeah, I mean, it feels like they were in on a joke that no one else knew or didn't pay off. Um, and potentially there's a deleted scene, but it felt like a scene that would have had a better payoff between him and Dolph Lundgren just because of all the back and forth that they had in the first two films. So beyond that, that I didn't really find too much as far as anything that I had an um, issue with. Um, and then... As far as Jean-Claude Van Damme, I liked him particularly in the second film because he kind of played an evil mix-up of Guile and Johnny Cage. So he did play Guile in um, the Street Fighter film and he could potentially have played Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat. So I think he probably could have been a better version of Johnny Cage in the original Mortal Kombat and could play like Johnny Cage's dad in the next film or something like that. But him playing the evil version of those characters were particularly good. Um, then as far as his name goes, uh, is the other part that was was one of those sloppy, simple things that would have gone on. But when you keep hearing the main, the good guy say that they're going to go after a guy named Polane, you end up thinking, well, that sounds an awful lot like villain. And that's basically what it is because John claude Van Damme is the villain in the film. So... It's not really any particular kind of deep as far as a joke goes, but um, I thought that was particularly simple, but gave me a chuckle. Um, 
And then I like the ending of the second film just because they end with the plane belongs in a museum. So I didn't think, or I didn't read any of the trivia to see if that was going to be a hint that Mel Gibson is going to be in the third Expendable films, but it felt like a nice setup. So I was kind of hoping that they had something like that. They would have something like that in the first film, but in any case, it was a good setup for the third film. Um, but my favorite of the three films is the third film because they kind of find their groove and they're able to merge the two first two films so the schlockiness of the first and then the seriousness of the third and merge it into the third film so i kind of i like the fourth wall being broken when they introduce wesley snipes character because um i think it was dolph lundgren who, or maybe the other guy who asked why snipes is in jail and he says for tax evasion so i like that um, and in general, for the first half of the third film, Mel Gibb, or Wesley Snipes' character was the best um, character. Um, and then once they introduced Antonio Banderas, he was my favorite character for the second half of the film. And I could have sworn that there was more conversation between him and Ronda Rousey as far as the main fight sequence in the building, but um, I could have just been remembering it wrong. But he, in general, I liked his character's portrayal overall. Um, so between him and Wesley Snipes, they are the highlight of the third film. Um, and then to kind of match what they did in the second film with John Clad Van Damme being an evil um, Guile and Johnny Cage, uh, Mel Gibson, as far as the villain in the third film, was an evil uh, Riggs so, from Lethal Weapon, so I liked it. He's basically calling on that character, but going full evil, so rather than a police officer, he's a villain, so overall a good um, portrayal there. And as far as the little touches, I like the third film because when a character, especially the hero, throws their gun to take out the enemy is a great sh shot in my film. I don't know why, I just get a kick out of watching it. And I didn't make a note of who did it in this film. I want to say it was probably Stallone or Statham, but the other place where it stands out to me was in the um, Keanu Reeves film. Um, so I'm going to look that up as I talk, but um, as far as um, just throwing guns at your character, uh, at the bad guy or the henchman that you're going after generally seems to make um, uh, a good um, scene. And it's the scenes in John Wick that it reminded me of with Keanu Reeves, but in general, I liked like when the, uh, the main guy or the good guy throws a gun at the henchman because I don't know it just feels it's a better way of showing that they're out of ammunition and instead of just throwing it down angrily and not being able to use it they're using they're continuing to use it as a weapon and get rid of it at the same time and of course you can't have a uh schlocky action movie without the main villain saying that they're gonna have to go and take care of business himself which Mel Gibson does in the third film so he I like that they introduce it for uh, how hard is it to kill 10 men and he makes an example of it with the guys with him in the command center and then he finally says that he'll finally do it himself so I like that um, and throughout the films you do have um, Stallone kind of bringing in his Rambo character and then he has a fight scene with uh, Mel Gibson as far as uh, making it a Rocky scene and I like that he rounded out the that particular fight scene with I am the Hague so bringing in his line from um, Judge Dredd where he says I am the law um, I could have I would have preferred he did, did it portrayed it a little bit better but it was good enough and it was good enough to uh, make out that that's kind of what he was pulling in um, as far as you know as good as you know Mel Gibson was pulling in an evil Martin Riggs from Re Lethal Weapon so in general like I said if you're going for high cinema and the films don't, generally don't have it but if all the um, action heroes in these movies or if you're a fan of all the action movies in any of these films then you're gonna enjoy it because you do have all of them um, in the film, pulling in the roles that they're famous for and um, either them saying their own lines or um, someone else saying their lines. So in general, it just works for me. So 
If I was to grade the films, I'd probably give it about a B. They were enjoyable, they were fun. Were they great? No, but I mean, in general, it could have been worse. And they set out to do exactly what they were um, there to do. So um, as far as good times with um, your various action stars, you um, they are generally just fun and um, good to watch and they get better as they go on so the first one is probably the lowest of the three and then the second one gets better and the third one is the best of the film uh or the three films so um i would say definitely watch them in order and i actually kind of want them to do more of these films they don't necessarily need to bring in um more of the young um generation i kind of like having all the classic action stars in different roles and or in their own roles but in different scenarios as far as mercenaries go um, and like the film title of the films are being the expendable crews that you that everyone can rely on to get the job done so that's all there is for this particular review so um, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, things you like, didn't like about these films or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is HeadphonesNeal.Reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, and of course, if you're a supporter on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01, then uh, you got a couple more updates um, as far as uh, the meetup coming in um august this is still coming up in august as far and a special bonus update as far as um an update to the schedule as well so that's all there is for this particular review so thanks for tuning in and being a supporter and subscriber to the podcast and until next time